The question is, as you survey the landscape, which is what you've taught us to do, and you look around at a team like the Carolina Hurricanes, how do they prepare? 6-3-1, and one, you know with their depth that they figure to lose a very good player or two. Yeah, of course. A quick comment on Seattle, though. Ron Francis is going to do an amazing job. That organization is shaped up so beautifully, not just on the hockey operations side, but on the business side as well. Uh, Todd Liawicki, everything they've been able to assemble out there, it's looking and feeling a lot like the Vegas Golden Knights, who, of course, are the gold standard. So congratulations yes. to them. They have hit on everything so far, and I expect them to continue that into the expansion draft. And Ron Francis, of course, will lead that effort in regards to what is going on in terms of today. There are a lot of teams that are looking forward to this expansion draft. Moves that they make today could affect them negatively come expansion draft time and teams are cognizant of that team specifically carolina minnesota tampa nashville what do they all have in common they all have too many good d mm. that's going to put a lot of pressure on them when you look at a team like tampa hedman mcdonough sergachev hedman has to be protected it's another element that's going on into the thought process minnesota Suter, spurgeon brodeen all have to be protected. Notice I didn't say a name like Matt Dumba. Uh, Nashville, same thing. Yossi, Ellis, Fabro, uh, Matthias Eckholm. Why were we hearing his name? Carolina, same thing. Slavin, Pesci, Dougie Hamilton, impending unrestricted free agent. There is a lot going on in management groups today, and a lot of it has to do with the guy we just mentioned, and we just gave a little love to Ron Francis, Tony. I, I got to call time out. He's an important guy on this day, believe it or not. I've heard you say that the last time around, that Vegas Golden Knights expansion draft, the GMs and the teams around the league learned some valuable lessons. What did they learn? Don't overthink it. Don't try to outsmart yourselves. Don't give up Alex Tuck and Eric Howla so that you can hold on to maybe another player and find out that those guys are better than what you Understood. gave up. So I think that's the main lesson. Now, Ron Francis, on the other hand, still fielding calls from people that want to know, hey, because they can talk now. Seattle is live to have discussions with teams. Hey, if I did this, what would you want in return not to take that? Those are the conversations that are going on. I find that fascinating. It is taking a little bit of a bite out of what's going on on trade deadline day today. But in the end, Ron Francis has held pretty strong on the prices he wants. I'm curious to see if maybe that lightens up as the day goes along. Now, I didn't mention Florida, Washington, teams with too many goalies. You can only protect one goalie. You've got to make certain players available. you got Vitek, Vanacek, and, of course, Samsonov in Washington. And we're hearing Washington may add some depth, but that won't necessarily affect it. Although it would help Washington if they decided to maybe try to trade a player otherwise. But, of course, you've got Drieger as well down in Florida with Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky has to be protected. You've got Spencer Knight in the mix. And we've got a kerfuffle for a number of teams. But Great word. That's, that's what it is on this day, and it's exciting. So what about a player like Ricard Raquel? This has come up a number of times. Yep. He has a year left, which in a normal year, would be very appealing, especially at his hit, and considering what a capable player he is, he's a proven 30-goal scorer. Yep. However, Mike Johnson, on a show you and I did with him, said, wait, 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 that might not yeah. exactly be what you're looking for, considering the expansion draft looming. Why? $3.7 million cap hit. I respectfully disagree with Mike Johnson. I know that Johnny will love when he hears this, but... Uh... <laughs> For $3.7 million for a 30-goal scorer, even though teams are up against the cap, you have time to rework your roster to fit a guy like that in. So I don't think that's prohibitive at all, quite frankly. Okay. If they have a big number, a number that's not considered team-friendly like Ricard Raquel's number is, then yes, Mike Johnson is absolutely right. Please cut that so I can play that for Johnny. <laughs> but in this particular case, I think he's absolutely wrong. I do think that if Anaheim does move him, they will get a first-round pick, and deservedly so. He's got two 30-goal seasons under his resume. He's still young enough where he can help a team. He's still got the potential to perform even better, in my opinion. They haven't scored a lot of goals out there. He's yet continued his offensive production. Uh, he's a valuable guy. I think that by the end of the day, we will see him moving. We heard Aaron Portsline talk about Columbus moving a goalie, somebody like an Elvis Merzlikens. What about him? 
Certainly a possibility. I think more than anything, Columbus has just kind of taken the temperature of the market to see what's going on out there. But that is a possibility that he could move. I just don't see it as likely today. Maybe at draft time or after the season. I don't see that happening today, but I could be wrong, and we'll find out very quickly, and everybody out there will let me know if I am. That's what I love about this day. We'll get to instant feed. It's like being a player. We'll tell you minute to minute how you're doing. This day is one of the most exciting days of the hockey year.